Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're going to try to combo off with Flubs the Fool as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 3 mana 05 lets us play an additional land each turn and whenever we play a land or cast a spell while empty handed we draw a card, otherwise we discard a card. So Flubs really rewards us for quickly emptying our hand and then hopefully we can string together a whole bunch of extra spells with a card draw from Flubs. I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the deck breakdown. First off we We've got some mana acceleration, because one way of quickly emptying your hand is just to generate a lot of extra mana so you can more easily deploy it. Then we've got a lot of landfall payoffs, since this is a landfall deck at the end of the day. Flubs lets us play an additional land, we've got more ways to play extra lands, which in combination with all these landfall payoffs can generate more mana, gain life, draw cards, or generate creature tokens to overwhelm the opponent, so they also include some of our win conditions. And then these are some of the effects we have to play an additional land in addition to the extra land from Flubs so these can also add up and then we've got a few ways to replay lands out of the graveyard which are great especially with our fetch lands to enable landfall twice with just one land and then we've got additional card draw effects or ways to maybe synergize with flubs by maybe replaying cards that we discarded or by exiling the top cards of our library that way we can still have an empty hand and draw the extra cards from flubs but still have cards in exile that we also get to deploy alongside it to get the best of both worlds then we've got a little bit of interaction some creature removal and bounce spells and then the miscellaneous second has some more fun offs that can synergize quite well in this deck. So yeah, that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration. We're playing Mox Amber. Any zero mana card can be quite good with flubs as a way to quickly empty your hand. And then once you're empty handed, you can play them to still replace them with an extra card and maybe get additional benefits. Mox Amber by far the best one, since it can also tap for mana. We've got plenty of legendaries to synergize with it. I'm not playing some of the weaker zero mana cards, since I still want the average card quality in the deck to be high. Then we've got plenty of one mana creatures with Birds of Paradise, a new addition as well from Bloomborough, Delighted Halfling, Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, and then Utopia Sprawl needs to enchant a basic land, but with all the fetch lands that's usually not an issue. And then both Explore and Gross Parallel can draw and play an extra land, can also be quite good with Landfall. An Archimancer makes it easier to cast lots of spells in one turn when we're comboing off by giving red and green spells a one mana discount. Arcane Signet can immediately tap for mana. Good Harrow, which can sack a land to get two more, also quite good with Landfall. And then Uro can also be escaped out of the graveyard, similar to Gross Spiral, also gains life, kind of does it all. And then File of a Galadriel is a card I include in a lot of decks, but especially here it's great, since we're more likely to be empty-handed and draw a card, and now we get to draw two cards with File as opposed to one. Then a Kellen can also be another way of putting an extra land in play. And then we get to the landfall payoffs, where a Druid class can gain life and eventually can level up to play additional lands as well. Bristly Bill provides plus one counters. Lotus Cobra makes mana, similar to Nyssa, which can also find additional elves and elementals. And then the Provisioner will make treasure tokens most of the time, which can also generate additional mana for us. Then we've got the Springheart Nantuko and Scute Swarm to go wide with 1-1 one -one tokens, especially Scute Swarm can get out of hand very quickly if we can replay a few fetch lines out of the graveyard for instance. Valakut Exploration, another way to provide card advantage that's going to be in exile, so we can still have an empty hand while getting additional cards in exile we can cast, and can also deal damage to the opponent as a win condition. And then a Corsair of Crufix can play a Lens of the Top and gain life, and Tatiova gains life and draws cards. Then we get to our extra land drop enablers. Azusa by far the best one since we get to play two additional lands each turn. So Azusa plus Flubs means we now get to play four lands each turn. So that gets out of hand very quickly with any of our landfall cards. Dryad fixes our colors and can uh, play an extra land. Also good with our fetch lands so we don't need to immediately sacrifice them and can instead keep them around until we're ready to combine them with a landfall payoff. Swordtooth needs the city's blessing before it can attack and block but also plays an extra land each turn. Case of the Locked Hothouse lets us play an extra land, and once we solve it we can play creatures, lands and enchantments of the top of our deck, and we just need 7 lands in play, which is not too difficult. Oracle also plays lands of the top of our deck and plays one extra each turn, and then Hugs plays an extra land each turn, can also sink additional mana into it to exile the top cards, so also quite synergistic with flubs when we're empty handed. And then to replay lands out of the graveyard we have Ramanup Excavator, Crucible of Worlds and Conduit of Worlds, which can also get back a permanent out of the graveyard if needed. And then our card draw effects include Faithless Looting, which we're happy enough to discard to flubs since we can always flash it back. Reality Chip can start playing stuff off the top if we reconfigure it. Inti can also reward us for discarding cards as we now get to exile the top card of our deck. 
Party Thrasher can also potentially exile two cards after uh, discarding. We've got Underworld Breach to replay everything out of our graveyard once it's nice and full. Containment Construct can cancel out Flops' drawback as we get to replay whatever we discarded this turn. Burgi also makes it easier to combo off, making red mana whenever we cast a spell, can occasionally play the Horn of Bounty for more card advantage. Then Augur of Autumn can play lands of the top of our deck, once we enable Coven can play creatures as well. The Tormented Prophet is also great since it will replace card draw by exiling the top two cards of our library instead, so also makes it easier to keep our hand empty and combo off with flubs. And usually our curve is quite low and we've got lots of ways to generate additional mana, so we can often still cast whatever we exile in that same turn without those cards going to waste. And then Song of Creation is pretty similar to flubs in that it allows us to potentially combo off in one big turn, lets us also play an additional land each turn, and whenever we cast a spell we draw two cards. Can be a bit of a number with flubs since it makes it more difficult to keep our hand empty, but usually we don't care since we're generating so much value, but the drawback is at end of turn we discard our hand, so usually not a big concern when flubs can just refuel our hand when empty handed anyways. And then there's Escape to the Wilds, also lets us play an additional land, and we'll exile the top 5 cards of our library that we have access to for 2 turns essentially. And then our interaction includes Lightning Bolt, as well as Cyclonic Rift. Even though it can be expensive to overload it, at least we can still cast it for 2 mana when needed. So that's why I'm playing Cyclonic Rift but not Rivers Rebuke, since in this deck it really rewards you for being able to cast whatever spell you exile or draw for the turn, so you don't want to have too many expensive spells that are uncastable. And then a Depart the Realm as well as Demon Bolt have the Fortal mechanic, so that's also pretty synergistic with Flubs, since if we don't want to cast them or potentially discard them to Flubs, we can always foretell them and have access to them later from Exile for a cheaper cost. Then Ancient Grudge also fine to discard, since we can always flash it back to destroy an artifact, and Shatter Skull Smashing can be either a land or a removal spell. And then our miscellaneous section has Mishra's Bauble, another zero mana card to maybe synergize with Flubs. Also quite good with our fetch lands as we can take a look at our top card, and if we like it we don't need to fetch it away. Then a Sylvan Tutor is a new addition, can search up any creature and put it on the top of our deck. So this card, disadvantage, but if we really need a specific effect like maybe Excavator to replay lands or Azusa to play additional lands each turn, this can get the job done. And then a 6 can be a way to get back cards out of our graveyard through the retrace mechanic, can also make it easier to be empty handed that way. And then a croaking counterpart can make a token copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 green frog, so it can also be quite good with some of our non-legendary landfall payoffs, and can also flash it back so it's fine if it ends up in the graveyard. And then Wonder we actively want in the graveyard, as it will give our entire team flying as long as we control an island. And finally Time Warp to take an extra turn, also incredibly powerful if we already have our landfall engines established. And then our mana base has plenty of basic lands to search up, couple channel lands for added interaction, the Shifting Woodland can maybe copy something in the graveyard if we have Delirium enabled, and then plenty of dual lands, including all of the shock lands like Steam Vents, as well as the Surveil lands like Thundering Falls, since these also have the basic land types, so we can find them with our various fetch lands. And those include some off-color fetch lands as well, since we just want to have as many in the deck as possible to enable landfall twice, and a polluted delta can still access all three colors through all those shock lands and surveil lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Eluge. So a deck with lots of counter spells means we need to be off to a quick start. This hand feels a little clunky to me. This is better, and Halfling especially, making our Legends uncounterable is going to be huge. We'll have to use my fetch land to play turn one, but that's okay. And then just basic forest is reasonable. Next turn I could play Nissa. Setting up Tatiova on the following turn. All uncounterable. And we're all strengthening their counterspell plan. But uh, hopefully we'll get Tatiova going. Now they could have cards like Witness Protection to shut it down. Could have also considered Swordtooth play land to trigger Nissa an additional time. But we'll see if they can answer Tatiova now that it's in play. 
consuming tide, bouncing my stuff back. So we'll keep Tatiova. And then next turn just replay most of my cards. Can go Nissa, play a lands, and play a halfling. Scalding turns fine. Fetch lands are good. Hit you for three. So yeah, blue deck is gonna struggle with a halfling and with all these value engines. We can just draw more cards than the opponent can counter. So they need to go on the offensive with Eliush and hope to string together enough cards here. They can cast a 2-drop for free thanks to the discount from Eliush and Baral. So yeah, I mean Eliush is still a scary card here that we need to respect. We could try to Demon Bolt it while the coast is clear. For now, try Scalding Tarn. Find a Provisioner, so start there. Play Swordtooth, can still play an extra land. Doesn't seem like our opponent's holding a counterspell either. And then I could still play Signets and then Demon Bolt. They might have a Negate in hand if they're pausing on non-creature spells. So this is unlikely to resolve, but uh, we'll still maybe give it a try. Spell Pierce. Actually just one mana short of uh, paying for it. That's too bad. And do I still want to play an Elvish Mystic? Sure. No attacks this time. We can block Eliush, but now our opponent's in the territory where they can start casting spells for free and potentially make life difficult. Yeah, Epiphany take an extra turn, although if they attack I'll block I think. So our opponent just taking their extra turn, not too much damage has been dealt. Displacer Kitten is a good one. Flickering Eliush is also a way to get more counters going. So maybe I just take it for now. Opponent's down to two cards in hand, so they need to refuel somehow. And we're about to play flubs. Our opponent had the bounce spell as it turns out, so blocking would have been a disaster. They flicker Eliush to get a bigger discount, but they are down to one card in hand. So if it's not a card draw spell, we can eventually overpower them. Alright, so step one, play Nissa. That one I would like to make uncounterable. Bona now bouncing Tatiova in response before I could play a land. Flickering Eliush once again. But now they're on empty. Even though they get a big mana discount. So Nissa resolves. I'll play Tatiova. And then play lands. Make mana. Draw cards. Construct's not bad either. So we can play file. And then construct. Pass a turn, and then next turn combo off with flubs, hopefully. We've got everything we need. Opponent is just top decking, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, it's the Battle of the Frogs, Helga versus flubs. Our hand could use a third land for sure. Is it bad enough to mulligan? We have the Lightning Bolt for a potential mana elf. Turn to Bristly Bill. 
But yeah, without more lands, we don't really accomplish much. So I think this is still a mulligan. Right, this I can keep. Would love to find a fetch land to go with Nyssa. For now, Utopia Sprawl, always good to enchant a basic land when possible. And name red. Turn two, we can both signet and explore. Could also try and save the explorer to go with Nissa to enable landfall twice. So maybe I do just play a turn two Nissa. Now provisioner as well, more landfall payoffs. So yeah, sure. Let's go with Nissa and then next turn could go provisioner. Play lands, hoping we have drawn another land. Opponent's got the Pilgrim. And passes with two mana up. They could have played Helga, but did not, so they must have some interaction available here. Crucible would be nice to resolve once we get a fetch land in circulation. For now, I think it's still Provisioner. If they counter it, fine by me. A memory lapse will put it back on top. A little bit annoying, but uh, I guess we can still play the coasts. And then since I know we're not going to draw another land, I may as well play the Signet here. And then maybe next turn I still get to play Provisioner. I guess, uh, yeah, we're still not going to have two lands to go with it. Our opponent now plotting a railway brawler. So yeah, start with an explorer. And a fetch land was perfect, so now we get to enable landfall everywhere. play a crucible and then I can still play an extra lane for turn make mana make treasure so if we play flubs and then play the lunar elves we also trigger flubs so that seems good of Valakut Exploration. Do we want to cast that now? I guess I do have an extra land drop from Flubs now as well. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Cast the Exploration. Keep the ball rolling. Lotus Cobra isn't bad either. Although we'll have to discard the Cobra now. Alright, so I think we're at the end of the line here. Just going to pass good fetch to enable exploration one more time, but if I save it for next turn, we can go off even more, I think. So that was an impressive turn, all thanks to Fabled Passage enabling it. There's Helga. And now the Brawler to trigger Helga and give it a plus one counter. So their creatures will be quite large, doubling the power thanks to the Brawler here. And take our turn. Another fetch lane, so we'll start there. Trigger flubs. Could also fetch in response, I suppose, although then I'll end up with an extra card in hand with Nyssa. Yeah, I have to be somewhat mindful of how I stack my triggers now. So we'll play the Prismatic Vista from hand. Triggering flubs. 
Oracle in Exile, but we want to play cards from hand first, and then discarding the Mystic is fine. Alright, and then now play Oracle. And draw lands. Play lands. Exile the Dryads, which I can play from Exile as well. Or a Song of Creation, and yeah, we're just completely going off now. There's no stopping us. We're definitely going to reach the token limit this turn. Can uh, discard Stomping Ground. Play Land of the Top. I'm fine discarding the Excavator at this point, I think, since we have Crucible already. And then maybe play Dryads, which will give me an extra land drop. I should be stacking these triggers differently, so we resolve flubs first and then the song, so I don't have to discard. But yeah, at this point we can pretty much cast our spells at random, and we'll end up drawing most of our deck, making tons of Skew Swarm tokens, and then can maybe even burn them out with Valakut Exploration triggers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Igra, the food deck. Got a decent hand, I think. Turn 1 Utopia Sprawl is always good. Bonus got the Halfling. And then I could already use the Bauble with my Fetch Land to look at my top card. But uh, I think I'll postpone that decision till next turn. Opponent with a Heaped Harvest for a bit more ramp. So they could already play Igra next turn. And Provisioner we want to combine with a Fetch Land if possible. So, maybe bobble myself now. See what's on top. A Lanaro Elves, I can potentially surveil into the graveyard at this point. And then I don't have to sacrifice a fetch land yet. If we want to save it for Provisioner or Scute Swarm. I guess Kellen's pretty good in this matchup, since it can just repeatedly destroy the opponent's creatures if it attacks. Could also Surveil here. Of course, the problem with the Kellen destroying their creatures plan is that Igra grows quite large. So the eventual goal is Skewed Swarm going wide to chump Igra over and over. Hope they don't have a way to give it Trample or destroy my board. I think I just take my turn here. Found a land. So I can go Provisioner, fetch, play a land, and then still have enough mana to maybe play a Reality Chip. Could also get Skewed Swarm going, although it's not going to make copies of itself yet. So maybe the play is... Play this untapped to play Oracle, see what's on top. And then I can shuffle it away if we don't want to draw it. How good is an Archimancer for us next turn? Could actually be alright. So I'll keep the fetch lands in play for Provisioner. So Igra attacks for 6. That's fine. And a Feasting Troll King making more food. That one tramples, so it's harder to block with a Skewed Swarm. A land on top is perfect. So... Step one might be Provisioner still. Then play lands, then maybe an Archimancer. Since we were kind of limited in how much green mana we had in play. So now I can fetch. Unless we want to play Skewed Swarm first. Yeah, maybe it gets Skewed Swarm going. And kind of ignore the Anarchomancer. Archimancer. 
Hope to find a land on top. Can surveil to improve those odds. And make it red-green. Ooh, Crucible's difficult to turn down since it allows us to combo off with our fetch lines next turn. So I'll keep that. So no copy of Skewed Swarm yet, so it is vulnerable to removal. But we're in prime position to go off next turn. Now I do have to chump Igra, since that's going to grow quite large. But happy to chump with Insect. Opponent pushes Cute Swarm to take it out. So we still take 7. So it's not quite going to be the turn I was hoping for. Now that the uh, Skewed Swarm's gone. But we'll find other ways to block. Alright, fetch land off the top is a good starting point. Can also consider making food to gain life. This turn it might still be better to treasure. And then if I play flubs I've got an extra land drop. So we want to mostly empty our hand if possible. Play flubs. Can now play reality chip to draw into the Yavimaya coast. And Boseju could destroy the Troll King if I draw into it. So I think that's where we're at. Opponent gets a land. They can return Troll King next turn, of course, but at least it's not a Trampler attacking me for a turn. And then I could still fetch here. Okay. I guess that's it for now. And that one creature has to chump. Could be the Anarchomancer. Opponent brings back the Troll King. And growing Igra. Yeah, I think we'll throw an Archimancer under the bus. Could see myself wanting Reality Chip to reconfigure. Okay. Case of the Locked Hothouse is perfect. So we'll draw into it. And then we can surveil afterwards. And then land on top isn't bad, but we have fetch lands as well, so we can probably be picky. Play the case, draw the land. Play the land, draw the file. Play the file, draw the land. Now play the land, draw two cards, thanks to File. And then Cobra's gonna be better than Explore here. So 
Now we're back to empty handed. Maybe time to play a fetch land. Play the construct, so whatever we discard, we still can cast. Alright, so I'm done with additional land drops for the turn, but we can still fetch. And I can also cast Kellen, but let's start by fetching. Demon Bolt on top. So we'll cast Kellen, draw Demon Bolt plus one unknown. And Hux isn't bad either, can play additional lands. Not much point in casting the Demon Bolt, but I could foretell it. And then cast Hugs. I'll need to fetch first. So we can play hugs, just for x equals zero is good enough. We'll draw two cards. Now we've got an extra land drop. And Underworld Breach isn't bad either. Access all those cards, including Scute Swarm. So play that. Still have Crucible to play a land. And our opponent scoops it up. So yeah, we would be able to pretty much go off with Skewed Swarm. Maybe not completely, since we're limited in how many extra land drops we have left. But uh, enough to survive an incoming attack. And then set up lethal in a turn or two. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Raydan. And uh, our hand's not bad in the sense that we have... All colors, and then file can ramp out Tatiova. Breach isn't doing much at the moment, and then six is also better when we have a full graveyard. So it's a little bit redundant here, getting stuff back from graveyard. So I'll look for something a bit more explosive, and this will certainly do. Turn one, Birds of Paradise. Can set up turn two. Any of our uh, three drops already. Better to play Provisioner when we can immediately play a fetch land afterwards. Paladin class will tax us during the opponent's turn, and they've got a portable hole, sadly. Okay, so... Can fetch for Mountain. Or we can uh, fetch Mountain with Arid Mesa. Play Inti. Mountain makes it a little bit harder to escape Uro. So could have also considered getting a Steam Vents. It's going to be an Iron Crag for a bit of ramp. And we untap. So File, maybe the better play here. So next turn we can go Provisioner plus Fetch Land. And then do we want to discard anything to Inti's ability? Not especially. Right, Wandering Emperor will exile it. That's fine. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you. I am almost sad to see Provisioner into Fabled Passage. And get an island. And then we can still play Uro. Prismatic Vista makes two treasure. 
and Demon Bolt also damages Planeswalkers, so we could take out their Wandering Emperor. Or we could play six. I think I'm fine just uh, bolting here. Could also foretell, but then our opponent just gets an extra samurai for no apparent reason. I'll be back. And then file is good if we're empty handed as well. Laurent's gonna blow it up, however. And that's one more card in Graveyard for Uro, I suppose. And they're gonna level up, pumping their team. Fetchland was a nice draw, so we can play it making more treasure. And then now go Flubs into 6 or Flubs into Uro. I guess Flubs into 6 is better. And uh, let me fetch. So Flubs triggers, we get to draw, and a Mox Amber's perfect here. Can still cast it, draw a card, haven't played land yet, draw a card, trigger landfall. Alright, and then now could still use Six's ability and get back a file, kind of like that idea. Draw with Flubs, find a Hedge Maze, and then I could still escape Uro here. Sure, why not? I guess we could also cast it with Retrace, which doesn't leave it on the battlefield, but it would discard the land and then draw again with Flubs, so maybe that's more fun. So discard, Flubs, draws two thanks to File. And then Uro draws as well. And then put a land in play. Since we didn't technically play it from hand, it doesn't uh, make me discard. And land can go here. Okay, that's probably good enough for now. We generated quite a bit of value. And maybe next turn I'll finally escape Uro. Still have a pretty full graveyard. Vindicator, we don't have a great answer to, admittedly. And Authority makes my creatures enter tapped. Not a huge concern. So if I play Corsair, I discard Looting. And then play the Fetch Land. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we can start going off, gaining even more life and then escape Uro, perhaps, and eventually take over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Vivian, so a plus one counter beatdown deck. So, could be a tougher matchup if our opponent's off to a quick start. Sylvan Shooter, not really what we want in our opener, necessarily. This hand feels kind of weak, and this is better. So, Mana Elves... Still would like to draw a few more lands. Opponent also with the turn one birds. And uh, yeah, Misty Rainforest probably wants to get blue or red. So I'm forced to play Boseju here, I think. Let's go with uh, Elvish Mystic. Don't care about counter spells in this matchup. Opponent's got the Corsair, land on top, and a Lotus Cobra is nice. Play it in a fetch lands. Can maybe fetch for an islands. Want to keep my life total as high as possible as well in this matchup. Play Dryad. Can play an extra lands, and then I don't need to sacrifice it yet. Just play halfling with a green mana. Okay. We see Shaper Sanctuary. We're not going to target many of the opponent's permanents, so that's fine. 
And now Vivian can destroy one of my creatures. Melotus Cobra down, that works. But now we can maybe finish off Vivian if we're willing to sacrifice a halfling. That land is good. But I think I do want to finish off Vivian here if I can. So sending Dryads and Elvish Mystic, for instance, would work. And then we can still play Burgi and Reality Chip. I think I prefer the creature half over Horn of Bounty. And then I can tap this for mana thanks to Dry it, so I don't need to sacrifice it. Save it for future landfall use. Song of Creation on top, alright. Can sometimes clash with flubs since it's difficult to keep your hand empty when you're drawing two per spell. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So Vivian is 6 mana, doesn't benefit from castle, but they could cast a 6 mana creature. It's going to be Scavenging Ooze to hit on the graveyard and the Shifting Ceratops. Okay. So I think it's time for Song of Creation. It's the only thing I'll do this turn. But playing Flubs, I guess let's see, play Flubs, get a red mana. Still doesn't let me play Song afterwards. I guess the upside of playing Flubs is that I get to still reconfigure Reality Chip. Maybe that's worth it. Because then I can play Land of the Top. Although then we would have to discard Song of Creation. But maybe that's acceptable here. And then reconfigure on top of maybe the Halfling. If they replay Vivian and fight it, it's the least important creature, I think. And then play land with discard Song of Creation. Or I can just pass. But then next turn I'm in kind of a similar situation. So I'll play it. Conduit coming up. Conduit can also get back Song of Creation. And as good with a fetch land. So your opponent's got Toski on top and one unknown in hand. I guess Scavenging Ooze can exile our fetch land here, make our conduit a lot worse. Close your eyes. Breathe. And, listen to and our opponent has to decide what to take out with Vivian. Goes for flubs. Alright, so we've got a coast on top. Can play that one just fine for now without having to worry about discarding anything. Bristly Bill's not bad. Make a mana. A Lightning Bolt can answer the Ooze or can answer Vivian. Both are fine. I think Ooze might be more annoying. And then Utopia's Prowl actually generates a mana with Burgi. Play the fetch lands. Get some counters. Can start growing my creatures so we can hold off the Ceratops. And Azusa is excellent too. And the yeah, opponent has already seen enough. Now with Conduit and Azusa we can play a ton of fetch lands each turn, grow our creatures with Bristly Bill. And then eventually we'll get Flubs back in circulation. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the splitter of seconds. Their opponent's gonna try and take additional upkeep steps. What do we think of our hand? No early mana acceleration. Inti into Coursers, alright. But then we also need more blue mana for Time Warp. So, yeah, it's probably fine to mulligan this. And I think this is a little bit better. Don't have any early mana elves, but Azusa plus Oracle is a pretty nice engine, especially with Crucible Worlds getting back our fetch lanes. Although our opponent might have a bit of removal here to 
keep those combos from going off too hard. Boots goes to the graveyard. Can surveil. And uh, sure, we'll put a fetch land in graveyard. Could keep lands in hand, so I have a more explosive turn with Azusa. I guess that's reasonable too. In case something bad happens to the Crucible. Opponent with a Plunder. Okay, so for now... Just gonna play Constructs. If I can keep the fetch lands to shuffle with Oracle in play, that can give us a bit more... manipulation over the top of our deck. Now this is an extra artifact. Crucible is also an artifact, so Plunder can deal quite a bit of damage when attacking. And our opponent could already play their commander. Okay. Don't have an answer lined up. Now we could deal 4 damage. Still liking Azusa here. And then I guess we can Demon Bolt afterwards. To take out the Plunderer, at least. I'll just get basics, since we're gonna end up fetching a lot. Could also try and hang back to block their commander and finish it off. But don't really want to put any of these in harm's way. Opponent's got a laughing Jasper. Okay, so that's going to start stealing a lot of our cards. Triggers right away. Although nothing they can play right now, it seems. Maybe an Elvish Mystic. Alright, so we get to untap. The part of the realm, potentially an answer for their commander here. So, step one might be Crucible, that way I can get back two lands, still have an extra land drop left, play Oracle, and then maybe still depart the realm afterwards. So that's two land drops, still have one, and then Oracle is plus one once again. Song of Creation on top. Could be a fine draw, admittedly. But uh, still seems worth it to depart the realm. And then I'll need access to blue mana. Steam vents got exiled, I believe, so I have to get Breeding Pool. And then I could play a Forest of the Top. And do this now. Opponent will get a druid class with Laughing Jasper, which is fine by me. Opponent may be contemplating a Pact of Negation if they're pausing. They have the Mystic to pay for it. They also get to see the top of my deck with Oracle. This is kind of an old-school templating where both players get to see. But yeah, next turn, play Flubs. And then hopefully combo off with Azusa and Oracle. Alright, so that works. No attacks. Jasper triggers. Finding Tormented Prophet as well would have been nice. Pono now looking at our Crucible menacingly. Do they have artifact removal perhaps? We are down to 10 from all the fetch lands as well, so... Drawing the Druid class actually would have been nice to offset some of the life loss. But uh, yeah, we should be able to untap with a lot of mana and have a pretty explosive turn. Bushuka Bog exiles my graveyard, so no more fetch lands with Crucible. That was pretty good too. Although it did cost them a tapped land this turn. So Kellen on top of the deck. And then start drawing with Flubs. And wow, opponent scoops it up so they don't even want us to have a fun turn here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing old stick fingers, sometimes a graveyard combo deck. What do we think of our hand? Doesn't do a whole lot, missing red mana as well. 
don't think Ancient Grudge is going to be particularly useful, but I like this hand a bit more. And then turn one can just fetch for a Surveil land. Maybe blue-green. So your opponent may not do anything until they cast Take Fingers for one or two, and then try and bring back a Cultivator Colossus I've seen before. So all we can really do is try and set up our own engine. And the forest will keep on top when we have Explorer and Azusa. I can uh, bobble myself and see if I want to shuffle, as opposed to keeping it for flubs. And the land I'm happy to keep, so I guess I'll just play the forest for now. I guess I could have also fetched after drawing and get another surveil land. I see Mesmeric Orb, so that's gonna mill us. But we do have the Ancient Grudge, as it turns out, so can play Azusa. Although now Nissa is also quite tempting, actually. So let's go Nissa first. Play a land, make a mana. Can fetch. And get an untapped land, play Azusa, play another fetch land. So yeah, we're going off here. Mountain's fine. Make green. Found a Lunar Elves. Can maybe get a Steam Vent so we have a bit more blue mana as well. And then cast Ancient Grudge. Let me cast a Mystic first, so the auto tamper doesn't mess us up. Grudge the Mesmeric Orb. All right, and then next turn we get to go off with Flubs, maybe playing the Construct first, we'll see. Shifting Woodland has also been enabled with enough times for Delirium. Now a White of the Reliquary. So they may not be an all-in combo deck with Cultivator Colossus at least. Scute Swarm with a draw. Yeah, I think I want to get Flubs going. So I guess we're just going to go Construct into Flubs this turn and next turn Scute Swarm to get it going. Opponent with a Flare of Malice in response. Greatest mana value. At this point, Nissa versus Azusa. Close call. I think I prefer Nissa since we have more effects like Azusa that we could find along the way. And we don't have any lands left either. Our opponent was worried about us having a land left and then comboing off, which is understandable. Now a Souls of the Lost, discarding Endurance. Could have also messed with our graveyard. And a Safekeeper will keep their creatures safe. That's fine, we're just gonna try and go wide with a Skewed Swarm now, I guess. And a halfling, so I get to play both here thanks to the construct. And our opponent has seen enough. All right, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Zareth, so opponent's going to be trying to steal things out of our graveyard. We've got a solid hand. Can potentially save the fetch lands until after we play Provisioner. Although Rockfall Veil vale does enter tapped at the moment. Still probably worth a shot here. Alright, so can still play a Party Thrasher and Rockfall Veil vale for now. And then next turn go Provisioner plus Fetch Land. 
pretty happy this got countered. Alright, so try Provisioner next, or we could try Burgi. Burgi is less important than it resolves, and our opponent could have another counter spell up here. Yeah, I guess we'll try Burgi. Opponent still counters. And then next turn, we can try Provisioner or go for Escape to the Wilds. Although Escape's gonna be better once we have more mana available. So might finally be time for Provisioner, or we can play Uro. It means I need to play the Sulphur Falls first, so then I miss out on the Landfall triggers in a way. Alright, so let's try this. Opponent counters once again. And then now I might want to Surveil to set up my next draw. Opponent's about to flash in Zareth if we're not careful, so... I guess our opponent's stuck on 4 mana, which makes it more likely that they have yet another counter. And Arcane Signets is something I can play alongside Uro, so it seems fine. So step 1, play Uro. That resolves. And then I could still go Signet into Flubs. This way I don't lose life. That opponent's gonna unwind, untapping their lands again. And uh, in case they have some flash creatures, it's probably not worth attacking. So we still have our escape left and flubs to refuel, so don't necessarily hate my spot. Opponent's still stuck on 4 mana, so they'll have more counter spells if they're not playing Zareth out. Could try and counterpart on the Lenor Elves. That works. And now I could escape Uro, getting rid of the counterpart, or I can play flubs. Which, at this point, would be nice if it resolves, but if it gets countered, no big deal. Then we can maybe resolve Uro. Opponent's gonna make it disappear. Back to the command zone, or I could leave it in the graveyard to escape with Uro. A little bit risky, but we'll try it. So now our opponent's got Zareth mana available. So this is where we want to make our big play, where they have to decide between playing Zareth or countering. And could kick things off with Uro, and then I could still escape afterwards. I guess it would be better to have the Uro in play to block Zareth, although they might have some creature removal as well. So close call. Let's start with Uro. Definitely exiling flubs here, so it goes back to the command zone. And our opponent's gonna counter again. All right, do you have one more counter spell left for my escape to the wilds? Or should I play flubs? Maybe playing flubs is the safer move. All right, and they had a wash away. Would not have been able to counter escape necessarily. I think I once again leave it in the graveyard for Uro. Although now it's going to take us a little bit longer. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so I guess they ran out of counter spells eventually. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jesse Zane. Can make lots of ambush vipers. Should be a decent matchup, since if we can both enact our game plans, we should be able to just go over the top of a bunch of 2-1 death touch creatures, especially if we can make tokens with Nantuko or Scoot Swarm. And we're off to a nice start. Halfling setting up a turn to Nissa with a fetch land. Opponent also has the Mystic. And then Conduit with fetch land, also quite good. Opponent going with the Utopia Sprawl and then still Jesse. Nope, Heraldic Banner, so they're being patient. 
We're still gonna play Nissa here, I think. And an Oracle is next. Can play Balagad off the top. Case is next. And we get to untap, so play fetch lands, make mana. Probably want to get an extra green source just in case. Find a Lanor Elves. So could play Tatiova and then still play a Lanor Elves. Seems alright. And then next turn with Conduit, I can replay my fetch land to keep going. Opponent's got the two lands, safekeeping is fine. So our opponents can make three mana with Nykthos, now five, so it actually nuts them additional mana. There's a Ambush Viper in circulation, although not the top card since we can see that with Oracle. And then Vorinclex isn't bad. Hits us for seven. Don't have a ton of plus one counter synergies that Vorinclex will stop, but uh, yeah, still a scary card. So this might be a good turn to Time Warp, or we can Cyclonic Rift with Overload to set the opponent back a bit. So we'll fetch again. Basic Forest is fine. If I play Uro, put a land in, then I'll still be able to Time Warp. All right, so we're finding all the pieces we need. Fetch land's even better. And we've got both Scoot Swarm and Nantuko, so we can start going wide. But uh, yeah, let's time warp. Take an extra turn. Can... Uh, just take my draw step here, I think. Save the fetch lands to enable landfall. And then play Provisioner and Scoot Swarm. Could also make copies of a creature, although the important ones are legendary. I guess what I haven't done yet is put an Antuko on top of a Scoot Swarm, but that might be overkill. All right, play a land. Swordtooth for additional land drops. The Scoot Swarms are going off. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, at this point we're just so far ahead. Alright, so we get to see our Flubs the Fool deck in action. And yeah, the deck's plenty powerful even without flubs, but once we get that engine going with enough additional land drops and other card draw engines, things can get out of hand very quickly. And as we've noticed, most opponents don't want to sit around to wait for you to take your entire turn, since turns can take quite a while. So it's maybe not the most fun deck to face, but it is incredibly powerful. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.